be included. What that means is that if you're doing a campaign like Rachel just described and Stephanie described where there's several different um, influencers on the campaign, it means that you can't be paid any less than the other people that are in the campaign. So obviously you speak and you'll find that later, but it's, it's a, it will be a contractual requirement for the brand to make sure that you're all kind of paid along the same on the same basis and you can't be paid less. So that would have meant that in Stephanie's and Rachel's situation, if you had that clause in your contracts, they would have been in breach paying you less if you found out later. So then you obviously got, um, you know, a, a, a claim if you, um, obviously you shouldn't even get that far, but yeah. yeah so ask for a most favored nations clause to be added. Vanessa, have then you heard you of that before? Have... As someone who's got an agency, Vanessa, have you heard of this clause? Um, and do you think brands would push back if you ask for it, just from the um, sort of an agency's perspective? Yes, we, we have tried it <laughs> on more than one occasion. Um, my line tends to be when they when they lowball us with a fee for one of the influencers, my line tends to be um, as a as a black owned agency that exclusively represents black and brown talent. It is our focus to ensure that our talent is paid on the same level as their white counterparts and for the services that they provide. We we get pushback a lot of the time, um, but there's there's more than one time that we've walked away from it. The, ultimately, it's down to the decision of the influencer as to what they do, but it's my job to make sure that I'm negotiating to the best of my ability to get the best to to get the best uh, the best fee in and you know, I've given you some examples of uh, of um, how I've increased fees. There's one that that um, comes to mind. They offered um, a fifteen hundred uh, for a campaign, and by the end of the negotiation, I think I got it to six two. That just shows what was available, but wow. they really want, yeah. So. It's for us to go and negotiate. Um, I have tried the clause a couple of times. It hasn't worked. I don't know where we stand in that. I actually haven't spoken to our lawyer about it, um, but I've managed to get the fee up, which and, and that is my my focus, is to get the, the best fee possible. Right. Uh, and like I, I've said in the past, it's up to the influencer. They make the final decision. So... Um, like Stephanie said, she dropped out of the campaign because she was 100% disrespected with the yeah. fee. And for me, I felt like she did the right thing. But it's not for me to tell any of the influencers you shouldn't take. I, I mean, I give guidance. I don't think this fee is enough. I've negotiated. They're not budging. I don't think you should do it, but it's up to you at the end of the day. Anyone else had any experience um, working on a campaign or anything at all with a brand um, and being knowing that you've been paid less than your your white counterparts anyone at all want to share yes um hi i'm venus and i've been in these rooms before i always appreciate being a part of these conversations that you have ashley um you're welcome i i yeah I, most of my um most of the promo work that i do for a lot of these brands is on instagram and I'm in a different space from a lot of y'all. So I'm in more of a sex positive space. So I'll do a lot of workshops for brands, promo for sex toys, promo for um, sex positivity and lead discussions and things like that. Um, I'm also like more known in the nightlife space. So I'm somewhere in between a cross of BDSM sexuality and just pure nightlife dance dance clubs so and things what, like that. So, so what I, is the experience of you kind of um, being paid less than your white counterpart? Yeah, so I, I, I kind of have to explain that for what I'm going to say to make sense because a lot of people aren't in those spaces. So the way a lot of uh, sex toy companies um, run their promo is they usually will just send you the product. And like, you know, like with anything else, usually they send you the product, you negotiate, they send you a contract. They tell you what you're being paid. So with the difference with a lot of sex positive spaces is that they, it's just more snakish. If, and I'm going to explain that. It's more snakish as like, they'll send you a product that's really, really expensive and then try to use that as payment. So it's not like they just outright 
um, just pay, like they just pay you less. And then somewhere down the line, you have to figure it out. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll send you a free sex toy or a free product that's really expensive. And then with black influencers in particular, they'll try to make that the payment and not pay you anything monetarily at all. So what they do with a lot of black um, sex positive influencers is they'll send them like a really expensive vibrator and then expect that that's payment. So where my experience comes in is I had a company, I'm not going to, well, actually I'll name the company. It was no, Adam please Eve. don't name the company. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, no sorry, names. sorry. So I, I won't say it. I, I won't say it again. Um, there was a, there was a company that emailed me. They wanted to work with me. They sent a contract. Um, we negotiated that they would pay me. Um, the, I, I told, well, they asked me my fee first and I told them that my fee to post for any sex toys or things like that was like two, two grand and up depending on the type of content that they wanted and the type of, whether it be like a sex tour review or it be like just straight promo. So um, it starts at like two grand and up. So they, you know, the person I spoke to on the phone said that was okay. That was fine. And what ended up happening is they ended up sending me a contract with a lot. I mean, it was like 20 pages long. It was ridiculous. It was like, uh, you know, it was just kind of hidden in there that there will be no, no payment, but like the, basically the compensation next to the line of compensation it said um free product so it just started listing products and i'm like looking for with the number that we spoke you know verbally over the phone and it was nowhere in there so what a lot of like adult brand companies will do is they they hope that black people don't know how to read and so what they do is like verbally they will say this is the amount yeah we agreed to that but in writing they'll make it so your payment is the product so this company so, tried. So V, this company, does that happen quite yes, often? Vanessa? It does. Yeah, too often. Yeah, they offer a lot of us like gifting instead of payment. So I know a lot of the fast fashion brands, they'll say to yeah. me like, oh, we have no budget. And they never ask you for your fee to know if they have, exactly. you know, if they can pay it or afford it. But they'll say, I'll oh, just pick 200 pounds worth of things on the site, knowing it's going to cost them like 20 pence to send it to you type of thing. And they do it a lot. I saw in the hashtag, um, Ashley, that someone mentioned the influencer pay gap. There was a, uh, in Instagram account that was created during Black Lives Matter because of this. And I remember reading a story where a black influencer was part of a foundation commercial that happened a couple of years ago. I think we're all familiar with that commercial where they had like 20 different influencers pick a foundation that suited their skin tone and stuff. And this girl got paid, I always remember like 1750 and they paid a white influencer five grand for not even turning up. She didn't even do the shoot, but she still got paid five grand. And that just blew my mind because this is just how easy it is for these brands to do it. And it's not until we speak up and say things, they realise that they've been doing these things, but it's really ridiculous. What can be done um, about that? No, sorry, go ahead, Tana. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm also... Well, I, didn't, I, 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 I didn't finish also. Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's just that we've got quite a few people on stage just kind of want to get for everyone. I will come back to you, Venus. Um, sure. Latana, do you want to... Um... Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I've seen the same thing as well. So obviously with, through our app, you can actually, small brands can actually come and book content creators. So we actually had big brands come through on the app and book content creators. And obviously we can see the live feed on the back end to see what's going on. And what I found weird with one of these big brands, which you want to know about, is that they put a couple of white influencers, um, paid them obviously through our platform, which is great. And then they sent me an email um, afterwards saying, hey, do any of your content creators accept that gifting? After I was just like, you know what? On our platform is payment only type of thing. That's how it works. But which content creators are you interested in? Because um, obviously we can't deny that to a content creator that's on our marketplace. They then gave us a list and we found the list was like predominantly black. And I found that very weird because they had just spent a lot of money on a lot of white creators. Wow. So this so is wait, so you've even seen definitely... it from like an app point of view. So like, because obviously, I'm not sure if we've made that clear, but brands can come onto Expo as well, right? To find small influencers, medium sized influencers, or even large influencers for brand deals, um, campaigns and things like that so the app's also good for influencers who just want to advertise their services but you're saying you've got data of this said brand paying white influencers a certain fee and then coming to you to offer, to offer gifting to black influencers yeah yeah yeah. of course they didn't say explicitly wow. explicitly but then when they sent me the list of content creators that, that they wanted to to do the gifting with i saw 
obviously the trend that most of them, I think about 95% of them are black. And obviously when I then look at the engagement, because we can see on our platform. So obviously, see, this is only creators on our platform. So I can't speak of it globally, but we see like naturally black content creators tend to have higher engagement than white content creators on our platform uh, specifically. So that's just data that we've seen um, essentially. So we found it very weird as how you want to pay someone who has lower engagement, which is the key thing here, um, but then gift someone who has high engagement, which didn't really make sense. I'm Nine sorry, plus. guys. I, so, sorry, I'm coming straight to you, Vanessa. I'm obviously quite ignorant. I don't work in this industry, obviously, recently with doing well on Clubhouse. I've got opportunities that are coming to me. And luckily for me, I've got someone who's representing me and, you know, making sure that I can, I get, you know, I navigate through this space very well. But I can't believe that if you've got all your data there that says that your engagement rate is higher, how dare they pay you less than someone who's got less engagement than you? Vanessa, I know you wanted to chime in. So we have a, we have a couple of things, points I want to make here. The first one is gifting is not payment. If they are offering you product in lieu of payment, that's what it is. It's not we'd love to offer you gifting and in exchange for X. That's not a present. That's not a gift. So we need to be able to, and I do it all the time, but influencers need to be able to go back and say, no, sorry, on this occasion, you know, in 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 respect, with respect to my paying clients, I don't do content for free product. However, if you're happy to discuss a collaboration, I'm happy to discuss my rates with you. So we shouldn't be afraid to say no. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, and I've said this before on one of your platforms, Ash, we need to, as influencers, invest in our own brands. Stop going to brands and asking them for gifting in exchange for content because it works both ways. Invest in your brand. If you want to jump on the trends, go and buy um, clothes, go and buy the makeup, jump on the trend, be seen. Brands all have social listening tools. They can see how many times you are mentioning their brand. So the more that you mention the brand, the more that they see your content, the more that they find it on brand, they will reach out to you and work with you. And it's up to you to negotiate from there. Um, Asari, I've seen you flashing. Did you want to chime in at all? I was just completely agreeing with Vanessa. Um, I think that's one thing that influencers tend to overlook. They tend to overlook the fact that it's important to invest in your brand to begin with. Um, things don't happen overnight, but of course, once you like work at it and you invest in the brand, you get the brand's attention. It could be any brand, like you want to work with a particular brand, set a goal. And um, obviously from there, like th th try and do your best to get their attention um, and yeah, gifting, of course, is not payment. Gifting can't pay the bills. So it doesn't matter how many pieces of clothes they want to send you. You can't exchange that to to, to pay your bills. So essentially, um, I had to learn very early on to say no. And I had to say no to a very big brand for the second time just last week. Had to turn them down again because, um, again, for the second time, they think it's enough that I just want to align myself with that brand and payment perhaps to them in their opinion, I feel is not, is not as big as aligning myself with the brand. So we literally just had to say, no, sorry, like you, you, you're, you're clearly not seeing my worth here, sure, um, sure. but you can do all these massive campaigns and drops with these huge celebrities. Um, but you don't want to like, you don't, you don't respect my craft enough to pay me my worth essentially. No, I've got you. Sarah, uh, you raised your hand a while ago and then I'm going to come to you, Stephanie. Go ahead, Sarah. Thank you. It's, uh, so, uh, thank you for creating this group. Um, so I am um, starting, well, I haven't had an opportunity to work with brands, but I do have a question perhaps for you, Vanessa mm -hmm. or Ashley. Um, how do we ensure that I'm getting the best deal? Because I do get brands reaching out to me wanting to collaborate, but I haven't worked with any brands uh, before. So what are your tips in terms of making sure you negotiate the right deal for you? Add at least 50% onto what they're offering you and then negotiate back from there. 
that's a really good tip so essentially if a brand is offering you a certain amount add 50 percent on because you think that that's like a decent threshold um anyone else any of the other influencers on stage got any um any other tips for sarah in terms of negotiating a, a fee that is is decent Do you know, I have like a small kind of cheeky um, uh, tip. Um, what I would do last year was that I would actually go and search up what that company made the year before or what they're predicted to make that year. Um, and then I just kind of like it. I don't think you can do it for every business or every company. But when you're, let's say, for example, you're approached by a super huge hair brand, like, you know, they're big because they're all over the world. They do television campaigns like um, billboards. Um, gauge their kind of their campaign strategies because you might see everywhere if you know that they're kind of a big company then I think it's kind of a no-brainer you don't necessarily have to do the research you can kind of just gauge that okay um they're big enough so let me go in with this kind of fee I think you should always aim high and then negotiate down never go low and then because when, when you go in low where you're going to go from there I always say like go in at your your top and then um, whittle down from there. Yeah, I was going to um, agree with that, um, would... what Vanessa said. I've done the same thing where I've added half, or even sometimes I've doubled it and asked for it and I've got it, and sometimes I've even got triple what they've offered. I think sometimes it is just going with what you think you deserve. If you look at how much time it's going to take you, the um, you know energy you're going to use, the props, everything I include it in the fee, um, and then I just I just ask. I think the the worst thing you can do is is undercut yourself. So I ask them if they say no, then we negotiate to a price that makes sense for both parties. But I think you should also, I mean, always aim high. Um, just really quickly, I want to go to Latif next, but I do just want to remind you guys. Um, we are talking about brands paying invoices on time and what you can do to uh, get your invoice paid within 24 hours. Uh, you can go over to my Twitter account. I've got a pinned tweet there with a link to download the Expo app. Uh, and essentially what they do is pay your invoice within 24 hours and then chase the brands on your behalf. So if you are a content creator or a small content creator um, and you kind of want your invoices paid within 24 hours, you don't want to wait the 30 days, you don't want to wait the 60 days, go ahead and download the Expo app. It is great. Um, it's also great if you're a smaller content creator, medium-sized content creator, and you want to advertise your service to brands. It's also great if you are a brand and you want to connect with um, influencers. Uh, Latif, I know you were trying to speak and then I'm going to go to Stephanie. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I think a quick one, I think, you know, it's been said quite a few times on here. And I think this is what's really great about the influencer pay gap is that if you really want to know what you should be getting paid, talk to other content creators or influencers um, and find out, you know, the kind of benchmark. I think, you know, and again, anyone could do this, but I think just throwing out high numbers is not always the best thing. Sometimes be realistic and match yourself with someone who's producing the same kind of content as you that has the same engagement and of course as we've discussed make sure that you have it in the kind of like your white counterparts your black counterparts male and female and kind of make sure that you've got a, a real good view rather than a partial one because I think a lot of people just start throwing out numbers and the brand's like okay we like you but that number actually just doesn't make any sense um, and what you also need to think about is that sometimes when they are reaching for campaigns, they may have like five people shortlisted. So while you're kind of doing all of this, you know, candidates one to four may just be ready. So I would say try to have open conversations. Obviously, you won't be able to have them on like big platforms like this. But, you know, talk to each other and kind of be as honest as possible. Thank you so much. Very useful tips. I appreciate it. I think uh, as a final thing, just to add on to that as well, is that you also need to look at your own stats as well so obviously on our platform you'll be able to actually see your stats in terms of follower growth engagement growth um how much engagement that you do do your brand posts get specifically and keep keep track of those so that when you go to let's say the same brand you worked with before and they're offering the same rate and you want to increase it you actually have data to prove that essentially Sorry, guys, I couldn't take myself off mute. Is there anything that can be done? Oh, sorry, no, Stephanie, I wanted to go to you next, and then I'll ask my question. Oh, thank you. Just a quick one. I just wanted to um, um, 
co-sign what um, you guys were saying about the gifting um, and how as influencers we shouldn't be so quick to kind of approach brands and ask for gifting in regards in in exchange for exposure because it can actually end up costing you um, if you have an agreement with a brand and they give you gifted items in return for exposure you have to pay tax on the item that they send you um, so I think that's just something to bear in mind so if you if a brand does approach you and they say oh would love to gift you this item always always make it clear and in writing say that look there is no guarantee that I'm going to feature this on my Instagram but if you want to send me the product you can but like I need for you guys to know that it's I probably won't you know I, I probably won't feature it on my Instagram or I, I there is no guarantee just so that we're clear because if you don't and it's kind of under the assumption that um, you have to post um, in regards to in exchange for that gift in then when tax comes uh, when tax time comes um, they will see that as payment um, so that's just something to kind of keep in mind with gifted opportunities. Is there ever a time when taking a gifted opportunity is a good idea or it's beneficial? Yes, I would say yeah. Yeah, I think when you first start, when you're when you're like, uh, my, oh, sorry, Esther, do you want to go? No, sorry, Stephanie. I, I I thought um it was just a question being thrown out there. I just wanted to say that yeah, I I believe that um because I'm really big on building relationships, um and I think if you're strategic enough and you're working as you're working to a certain goal, um then yeah, it is a good idea. It is a good idea, but um of course try and create content from the gifting gift like what you've been gifted essentially because you're not just going to accept gifting and then expect to have like a, a big contract or a big campaign from that same brand like they more time when they gift they kind of want to see what you do with it um because the reason that they're adding you to their PR list is because obviously you've, you you you've you're of interest to them and they kind of want to see perhaps what you do with the item and I know of late a lot of the stuff that I've been gifted has always kind of turned into um, campaigns or sponsored posts and stuff like that so it is a good idea but at the same time you remember that you have to do the work like being gifted is great but also do the work and I just wanted to add another thing as well that um, if a brand says to you oh please don't discuss fees with another like somebody else on the campaign we just don't want anybody to um we, we can't we just kind of want to keep this between us that is a problem if they're telling you not to discuss fees that's an issue does that happen oh yeah 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 yep. they put oh it in gosh, contracts shady. as well they put yeah. it in contracts as well yeah yeah one of the very big campaigns like my very first like campaign I did that was like huge it was with a big makeup brand um I remember she gave me the contract and she was like oh if you don't mind just please try not to discuss the contracts with other people you know we're just trying to make sure and I was like oh yeah like naive of course I was like, oh yeah like, I'm not going to be speaking about my money business to people here like I don't know these girls so I thought it was innocent but looking back now the reason why she's telling me not to do that of course because firstly I was the only black girl on the campaign um so yeah there you go that that was just that was clear from, the reason. Hey, actually, that, that's wild could I hear from um some of the other girls who have had that same experience I, I saw Rachel and Ropo agree and has that happened to you where brands have explicitly said don't discuss your fee with anybody else yeah it happened it's yeah, happened even happened the campaign I did last month it was in the contracts mm -hmm. so what so there's just like a clause in your contract that says sorry Ropo I think you were trying to speak there I think I cut you off no, 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 it's fine. Um, yeah, it happens quite a lot. It happened with me and another influencer, but um, the other influencer that I was working on the campaign actually came to me discussing what she got paid. And obviously from there, knowing that I couldn't talk about it, but I just wanted to see from her side what she got paid and she got paid significantly less than me. And it made me feel bad because... I don't know it's just it was just a bit weird but we did exactly the same thing similar following and she got played like significantly less and I felt really bad for her um but I, I definitely think they do it um, a lot on purpose so um to just you know prevent anyone from talking and this from happening hey I actually can I add to that I'm sorry I'm down here at the bottom oh yeah go ahead go ahead so, me, so I'm I, I don't know I think everybody here is British um I live in the U.S. and a lot of the contracts even before they send you the contract, even before they talk about the deliverables and the money, they'll send an NDA that you have to sign to even find out what the deliverables, what the deliverables are going to be and what the um, money is going to be. So you can't even talk about it, you know, before you even figure out the money. 
Wow. That's very rare in the UK, though, I've noticed, I would say. Yeah, I'll really be get... honest, in the UK, sorry to interrupt, guys, I've actually wrote a lot of contracts like that and NDAs where I've had to do a lot of deals like for a finance company where we'd work with loads of different um, brands in the UK and US. And as the last lady said, again, I would have to create the NDAs first and a lot of the clauses would involve them not discussing that because we'd work with loads of big bands. So I think the main reason even behind that, I think stands back very similar to the fashion world where it's like they don't want um, different banks and, you know, universities and stuff discussing fees because our philosophy was the more people you enroll, the more discount we was willing to give. So compared to the average person asking for the same product, the prices was obviously a lot different. So I can only imagine in the fashion and entertainment side of things where I do a lot of PR and so forth, like it must be the same for a lot of deals as well. Um, I would just add, um, sorry to interrupt Ropo, that it's a standard clause in contracts, if I'm honest. Definitely can see the benefit to the brands in regards to influencers, but it is a standard, there's like standard confidentiality clauses in contracts that will say, don't discuss what we talk about, including the negotiation of this particular contract. So I don't think it's, I just wanted to clarify that I don't think it's not just added into these particular contracts as a um, a catch, but it is a, a benefit to the brands that you don't discuss the fees. But again, um, you know, you, you just have to, another thing I, I should have added as well is that when you're negotiating, you can ask what, what's your budget? or what budget do you usually spend on advertising? Because remember, the reason why these brands are using influencers is because it's advertising, right? And now we're in a, a time where people use influencers like the real person to advertise their brands. But prior to influencers, these brands were, sorry, these brands were spending ridiculous amounts of money on proper campaigns. That, that budget is still available. It might not be available at, that level and they, they might push back and argue with you about oh well we don't share that information but I think sometimes you have to lead with your chest and go in and say all right um you know we let's work together before you set your rate say to them what budget what's your marketing budget what's your advertising budget what's your campaign budget um and then you can kind of work from there but I still agree with what Vanessa says about adding the 50 percent on because they're never really going to tell you the the real figure but but when you lead like that, you're showing them that I know you guys have cash. Got yeah. you. Good tip. Um, Gary, I think you so, raised your hand. You wanted to come out. I'll come right back to you, Rafi, I promise. Yeah, thanks. Um, just a couple of things, really. Just going back to uh, NDAs and stuff. Often as the brand, um, you know, it is a, it's a competition thing. Like, we don't want our business information going out into the world. Um, you know, for our competition to see as well. You know, sometimes there are definitely shady elements with some businesses not wanting, um, you know, people to know what fees they're paying people. But a lot of it is due to competition in the market um, and not wanting other businesses to kind of understand um, what you're doing and what your marketing plans are. Um, ah, the other please. thing, yeah, the other thing uh, quickly about just general influencers and ambassadors and affiliates and, and stuff that as a brand, you know, that companies work with, um, I've worked both across uh, UK and, and USA, is the vast difference between good ambassadors, good affiliates is is insane. Like, I work personally at the minute with um, over 500 different ambassadors, and the level of work between those those people is, is vastly different. You know, some people, I have a, a five people, who spend their job typically is chasing people um, for content and good content. And it's it's so difficult that I'd say the best thing to stand out is try and overachieve with those businesses. If you want those businesses to pay you more money and everything else, overachieve what those deliverables are and make them amazing. Because like I say, the difference between it is huge. What would you say to that, Vanessa, about sort of over delivering? And then I'm going to you, Latana. What would you say about sort of over delivering for the the brands? Um, to Gary's point, for sure, um, <clears throat> it's a bit of a frustration of mine that um, black creators have to go over and above. Sorry, my my um chest is quite bad at the moment. Um, that black creators have to go over and above, um, and they do. Uh, I'll give you an example. One of our creators did something for um, a brand a couple of weeks ago. 
she um, spent money on a photographer, a videographer. The brand came back in 24 hours and they asked to license the contact, the, the content, which meant we had not lifted 50% on the content. And this is a guidance that I give to all our influencers. When you have a campaign, spend money, invest in that content and you will find the brand will come back next time and say, oh, well, if we give you this much and you created that content, what will you do with this much money? And you're more likely to see your fee increase and to work with them again. So I do 100% agree. Go over and above it. And, and it's, your, it's your platform as well. So you want it to look, you spend so much time curating how it looks. Let's look at the quality. Let's look at you know, why shouldn't it be the quality of TV advertising? I, I don't think there's anything wrong with So essentially, like, because it's great, again, someone, I'm, I'm sort of a, a layman here, like, I'm completely outside of the industry. So really, like, and this is going to sound really stupid, it is about just reinvesting um, every sort of time like you would in any business. And I guess I've never really looked at it like that. So this conversation has given me a completely new... Um, I don't know, I guess, perspective on what influencers do and how hard it is for them. Latana, you wanted to chime in. Yeah, I just want to reiterate the whole data play as well. So, like, even when we work with content creators to, you know, promote us or use our app and talk about it, essentially, um, even though, of course, if we pay them, we also give them a trackable link. And even myself, I always make sure I give them, you know, same day, how many clicks went through, how many downloads came through, then in a week, then in a month type of thing. And this is something we always tell content creators to always ask from the brand because you could be doing amazing numbers and they're not telling you because they know that once you find out they're going to have to pay you more essentially so always ask you know if they've given you a link or whatnot always keep a track of how many clicks you're getting through how many purchases through there because then you can do use that to negotiate higher fees when you work with those same brands or different brands later on no really really interesting guys just really quickly to reset the room we are talking about brands um paying on time via invoicing um if you guys are content creators at all and you have uh invoices that you want paid within 24 hours instead of waiting the 30 day 60 day or 90 day period please go over to my twitter account there is a, a pin tweet there and you can click the link in the bio to the bio sorry click the link in the tweet to download the app it's called expo and it's also great just download it to have a look guys as well because um it's great for content creators um and brands alike who are looking for um, each other essentially right so you as a content creator especially if you're you're new to the industry and you're trying to um, connect with brands it's great for you to showcase your engagement rate uh, some of the content that you produce um, and your rates and then it's great for brands to be able to find you and connect as well so um, I would say it, it's great for anyone who's creating content at the moment um, a few of you guys have raised your hands most recently is it Nelson so if I could just chime in really quick because I have to hop yeah off. go ahead go ahead thank you um, so from a marketing standpoint, I just wanted to throw this out there. Um, a good starting point for uh, fees and what you should charge if you're someone who's new is knowing how long it takes you to create the content. And then honestly, um, knowing how, once you know how long it takes you to create the content, break it down into hourly and see if you were working a regular job, would you accept that as an hourly rate? And then add in all of the other costs um, to create that content. If you are someone who has uh, worked with brands in the past, um, a good starting uh, point is to know that if as an affiliate, for example, commission rates tend to go anywhere between five and 30%, that's the average. Um, and kind of go from there. So if you, it's important to know your numbers um, and know what your conversion rate is. If you have a, a thousand followers and you have a 30% conversion rate, I mean, I'm just throwing out some random numbers here, um, then know how much the product costs um, and go from that commission standpoint and add on from there so that you have room to work down but that's a good like baseline that's a really good um way of thinking about it and it's funny you say that because again 
um, I've, I'm not an influencer, but I work, I've, I've got my own um, consultancy business. And when I was thinking about like what to charge, I was I, I started off charging way too low. And someone said to me, well, what do you charge in your normal job? So why are you charging so much less? And that's a really good way of doing it. Um, I really appreciate that insight. Um, I want to go, is it Nelson? I want to go to you. You raised your hand a while ago. No? Okay. Uh, how about Lashante? Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, hi. No, thank you for creating the forum. So I have experience in the advertising field, both in the UK and Oh, your America. background is a little bit higgledy higgledy. Okay. Uh, Angie, you also raised your hand. Hey, Ashley, and hey, everyone. It's been a really great chat. I just wanted to speak from a brand's perspective, and I, d I hope I'm not stepping into the fire. But, of um... course not. <laughs> it's, an open, it's an open conversation. No no judgment, no no wahala. Um, I would definitely agree with some of the points that Gary made around kind of brands definitely including certain terms and clauses in their contracts just about, you know, not wanting to have certain information get out versus competitors, because obviously there is a lot of that going on, going on within the industry. And then I think some of the points that Vanessa have made have been very valid, and especially Esther around kind of understanding and knowing your worth and kind of asking the question and negotiating backward from there. I think a lot of people, because of a particular brand, will say, oh, okay, that's X brand. Oh, I must, you know, I want to play the game or I don't want to offend them. And so might, you know, dumb their costs down. But the only thing you can do is to be true to yourself and be authentic. So I think know your worth and ask the question. A brand can only ever say yes or no. Um, I would say the point around gifting, I would never necessarily say that it's always a negative to be gifted. I know in my own background, many of the relationships that I worked on, collaborations that I then went on to sign with different influencers started off from a gifting relationship. I think it's about understanding the brand, the, their intention and knowing the difference between you know, a brand just trying to get a quick win placement and coverage from you versus them trying to have a conversation with you around long term opportunities and kind of it building and potentially leading on to more. Um, I think there's an under I think, yeah, someone needs to you need to as a as an influencer also be aware of where um, that conversation could potentially lead to. I'm not saying buy into it blind and kind of hope and wishful thinking but when you're negotiating with PRs with reps for the brands have those real conversations I'm not saying be a bitch about it but brands we do have budgets I'm not going to lie many of our budgets have been cut considerably over time so a lot of the time when when reps are coming to you their numbers are literally the numbers that they are saying at times because I've had those real honest conversations but that doesn't mean that down the line what we're doing today can't lead to build into something else later on down the line and so I would just say just be bold ask for the money that you believe that you deserve and have that honest conversation no really good advice V how do you feel about that do you feel like sometimes the brands are being honest with what they can spend um can I just pick up on the gifting thing because I think yes um, I should have clarified your other there, there is a place for gifting where it's a no for me is when it's can we send you something in exchange for x I feel like those that 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 approach you and say we've just launched a new product we'd love to send you this and see what you think about it end of story then it's up to you to create that organic content should you wish should you like it etc so um, I should have clarified that earlier when I was saying no to gifting. Um, what was your question again, sorry? Do you think that sometimes brands are just being genuinely honest with their budgets and how, you know, how much they can afford and kind of what they can stretch to? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry. No. No. I like the honesty though. Can... And that's what people in the room need to hear, though. Like, it, it, you know, it's all well and good saying that the brand's budgets are being cut, cut. But, you know, if they can spend a little bit more, then they can spend a bit more. Do you know what I mean? Can I add a point as well, Ashley? Yes, please. Um, I've, I am friends with a few people that work on the marketing PR side. And they have said to me in the past, and these are black people, like black women and men, who said that they've seen a, a kind of pattern where a lot of black influencers don't ask for enough because they're scared to ask for enough and they, they're kind of hesitant with the way they ask 
And they've also noticed that because it's a big brand, they will offer up their services for free as such. So because it's it's a huge makeup brand or whatever, they'll say, okay, I'll do it for free because I just want to work with the brand. And it's like they haven't tried to build a relationship that, you know, you start off with gifting and then it goes to sponsored posts or it goes to paid um, contracts or free term, con- free month contracts, whatever. And they've been the ones that we're pushing onto them saying, well, this is the, the budget we have, you know, kind of like hint, hint, take it. And they've been like, no, I think that's too much. Um, I'll settle for this, this and this. So there are some influencers, I feel, who don't understand how it works and they're settling for the bottom. And that's why I say a lot of times go high because I think a lot of people don't realise there is a a lot of these budgets are there. There's huge budgets out there, but I don't feel like a lot of black influencers are asking for them. Interesting. Um, Anybody else want to chime in? Adja, you raised your hand. Hi, yeah. Um... I want to say, I think a lot of people don't recognize the difference between like an indie brand and a big, big brand. And I think that's some of the confusion. Like I work with sustainable and ethical brands and I've worked with brands before. And one of the things that I always recognize is that for a small brand, those margins are razor, razor thin. And so when it comes to sustainable and ethical brands, generally I do take gifted stuff from them because I know their margins. I think a lot of times people will see a big brand and they'll be super like excited because, you know, I really want to work with this big brand. But in actuality, the mega brand should be always, always paying, you know, but a lot of people will look at a brand where it's basically one person and maybe like, you know, one additional person that they hire to help them and say, okay, but why are you trying to rip me off? And that's not the person who's trying to rip you off. It's always the mega brand that's doing the ripping off there. Good point. I think some of the people before were saying, actually, the smaller brands tend to kind of pay well and pay on time, and it is the bigger brand. So, uh, yeah, I think we're kind of all on the same page in in that aspect. Um, Who else wanted to chime in? Is it... Is it Fenella? Yes, hello. I wanted to talk a little bit about the brand side and the influencer side. I'm both an influencer and I work in luxury marketing as a marketing director. And I wanted to say this, of course, like as a black woman working in marketing, I always look out for people of color, but it is true that oftentimes we lowball ourselves. But I also feel like coming from, you know, branding and what I want, you guys are producing the content for me. Whenever I work with an influencer, you're saving me so much money that I would have had to spend on like a photographer, a studio, creative director, makeup, all of these other things that you're saving me money for, you know? And I think that influencers should like start like really looking up, like how much do brands really pay for these campaigns outside of using influencers? Because most times we're paying anywhere from like, minimum 10k like that's like a low budget shoot but like sometimes we're paying like you know a hundred thousand and things like that and it's okay to ask for amounts that are not 250 350 but it's okay to ask for like 10k from a brand to produce content like that as well Vanessa what do you think about that is that really good yeah no it's 100 percent. it's what I tell our influencers all the time and it's actually what I would go back on email and say to some of the brands tends to be agencies that we don't only take into consideration the platform we take into consideration the production the editing the creation everything that it takes the time it takes to create all of that you've got one person being a um an advertising agency being a media platform being a makeup artist being a hairstylist being an editor you've got one person doing that so absolutely and I the other the other point that I wanted to make is when Latana was saying that um on the platform they can see that the black creators have higher engagement in theory and this is what, what I'm trying to push out in theory well in actual fact the black creators platforms are highly, highly targeted and very niche. And so you can, you know, compare it to luxury brands like Louis Vuitton or maybe not Gucci, but Chanel, you know, where Chanel, you can actually only buy, I think one bag every two months or two bags in a month or something, because they, you know, they have a very high-end customers so you're a high-end platform black creators are high-end platforms because 
you know your audience, you know your audience trusts you, you know your audience buy from you. So why shouldn't the brands pay a premium as opposed to paying less? And that's a narrative that as a collective, we need to start putting out there. Like one person can't do it on their own. Everyone needs to come together. That's when I was saying earlier about gifting. If we stop going to the brands and asking for gifting, they're going to have to come to you and start paying. No, really good point. Really, 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 really good point. Um, anybody else want to chime in? Um, Jessica, I know you represent um influencers as well. Have you got any advice for this, you know the person who's kind of just starting out on their own, um, when they're sort of negotiating how much they should get paid? Yeah, I mean, I've been enjoying listening to this. Um, it's quite interesting to be honest. Um, but I would say that it's such a fast paced market that you've got to be careful on how much you think you're worth obviously we all have something in our mind of what we think our clients are worth or what if you're an influencer yourself what you're worth but actually if the brand won't pay it effectively you're worth not as much as you think you are and that's not offensive to you personally that's just a business for example some brands care about status for example there's a lot of influencers that have massive following because of clout there's a lot of influencers that are half naked so they get a lot of engagement then there's you know um environmentalists there's like all different types of influencers and you just never know what the brand want until you speak to them and see what they're looking for and then obviously that's when you negotiate so I mean when it comes to rates it's pretty tough like when people say send a rate card I don't tend to do that and we have like 23 clients signed um my agency is called Unlock Branding and we have some pretty big influencers signed and I just feel like it's really got to be on the campaign and what the brand is, who they are, what they're looking for and, all, and obviously what the creator wants to do as well. So I can't really give you an exact answer. I just think keep in mind with what you would need to earn to make a living, but also just think about it in terms of the long term for example if that one post or one activity means that you'll work with them for a year because they like that one post then obviously you'd rather put your price down a bit like we've done that plenty of times where we kind of just start off with a post that's slightly discounted or maybe do like three posts in a package deal or across platforms like a TikTok, YouTube and an Instagram post and then go with that and then see. Um, sorry that's a bit complicated to answer but, no, but it's I like, just don't think advice. there's one rule and I think to say that to compare to your peers I'd be honest with you and this is in um, you know one of my clients who I think is in the room as well and you know I can't speak on behalf of everyone but we have found out as well that a lot of people lie so like I know the market a bit better because there's 20 clients or well, 23 clients so you can kind of know what the brands are asking from different people so you can see the bias or you can see if it's a real you know rate that reflects that person and their following but sometimes they don't even care about engagement they just want that person because that's the look they want for their website or they want this influencer because it's good for this so you can't always tell interesting no, can inter I add a point Ashley to what Vanessa was saying yes please um, and this is a point that I want a lot of black influencers to put, prick their ears up to. So I've been a natural hair influencer for the past seven years and I've crossed over to different platforms. If it wasn't for the black natural hair movement, there wouldn't be a lot of these new natural hair products that have come out that are from brands that never catered for black hair or natural hair before. When they come to you as a black influencer make sure that your fee is high please because without the black influencers on their campaigns they can't sell their products at the same rate as the other products that they have that are for other demographics and i'm saying this because we created the space therefore we should gatekeep the space making sure that the people that are in the space as influencers are getting paid what they deserve i've had brands come to me and offer like they want all this work done for like 200 pounds, 250 and stuff like that. When I know it's worth way over 10 grand. And when I quote that, they'll say to me, oh no, that's way out of pocket. We don't have that. They have it. They have it to spend because they know that our market spends more than any other demographic when it comes to hair and beauty. So just keep those things in mind because what Vanessa was talking about us being premium, we are very premium 
in the beauty space, especially when it comes to natural hair, hair care products, and also beauty products, especially especially if it's like foundations that are catered to darker skin tones or brown skin tones that they're trying to market because they need us to sell their product. So make sure you are setting your prices accordingly because I have seen people that do campaigns for these brands to launch their natural hair sector or departments within their range that they never had before, but they've realized that we make them a lot of money if they have those products. So just be aware of that because I'm seeing a lot of influencers who are not going high in these sectors and it's very frustrating because without us, they wouldn't have anything to sell. So just be mindful of that kind of niche market as well. Okay, just I just really great. Yeah, I'm going to go Vanessa, then I'm going to go to Stephanie. But before I do, guys, make sure if you are tweeting alongside us, you use the hashtag Talks with Ash. You guys already know the vibes. My name's Ashley, and I do a topic once a day. So if you are enjoying the discussion, make sure you give me a follow. We are talking about why brands don't pay on time. And if you are a small content creator or influencer, and you would rather your invoices be paid within 24 hours instead of having to wait 30 days, 60 days, or 120 days, download the Expo app pop over to my twitter account there is a pin tweet and in that pin tweet there is a link to download it um directly from there they specialize in paying influencers content creators any sort of um creative their invoices within 24 hours so you don't have to wait it is also fantastic guys if you are 